In this video, I'm going to talk about sickle cell disease. And sickle cell disease is basically when the hemoglobin molecules um, are, um, the normal ones are replaced by mutant forms. In a normal uh, person, you will have hemoglobin A, which is the uh, normal form of hemoglobin. In sickle cell, you have a form called hemoglobin S. And uh, you really need to have um, two copies of this hemoglobin S for this disease to manifest itself. It's basically a mutant form of hemoglobin. And now, uh, hemoglobin, of course, is the molecule that sits inside the red blood cell. And the red blood cell, also abbreviated as RBC, is at the heart of this uh, disease. And it's best illustrated with a diagram. So here's a nice diagram of uh, normal-looking red blood cells. And you can see they're round and, um, and kind of look like a, a donut. Um, they are able to flow freely through the blood vessels to various parts of the body and this one shows a cross-section where one, one uh, red blood cell has been cut in half and inside are the tiny little hemoglobin molecules. Now these red blood cells uh, travel through the um, uh, blood vessels to provide um, oxygen to various parts of your body, various tissues. Now oxygen is what sits inside the hemoglobin so that's the sort of order of events you've got the red blood cell and inside the red blood cell you have a hemoglobin molecule and then on each hemoglobin molecule are four uh, oxygen molecules okay so when the red blood cells look like this everything is fine but in sickle cell anemia what happens is the mutant hemoglobin HBS what it does is it, it causes these red blood cells to have a sickle shape and uh, that's illustrated here uh, in this diagram and you can notice how the shape is different. Now what that shape does is it'll, it makes it so that the red blood cells can't flow uh, freely uh, if they were, as if, if they were normal shaped. So this uh, causes a blockage of blood flow and if the blood is not flowing properly through these vessels to the tissues you get ischemia which by definition is a poor blood flow and if the blood is completely blocked from uh, reaching the tissues you get infarction which is a complete blockage of blood flow to the area and the tissues eventually die because they're not getting the oxygen that the hemoglobin normally delivers so that's a uh, fundamental uh, definition of what's going on in uh, sickle cell anemia. So it's important to understand uh, the pathophysiology. So here's a nice blood vessel and let's just say this is the end organ that it's um, supplying blood to. In a normal case the red blood cells would be nice uh, and round and they would be able to flow to the tissue and provide the oxygen that sits inside the hemoglobin molecule. But in, in sickle cell anemia, you've got a mutant uh, hemoglobin, uh, and that causes these red blood cells to now be sort of sickle shaped, and that can cause um, a, la a poor blood flow, poor circulation, because they clump up and they stick to this, the sides of the blood vessel and that poor circulation can lead to ischemia which is poor blood flow and then eventually if the blood flow is completely blocked infarction okay so that's a very fundamental thing to understand so now let's move on to the signs and symptoms so if someone has sickle cell disease what kind of symptoms will they present with well as I always say instead of memorizing all the symptoms let's just try to understand what's actually happening if the tissues are not receiving the proper uh, blood flow, you'll have ischemia and eventually you'll have infarction. And what this does, these are not symptoms by the way, these are this is part of the pathophysiology, but what this does is it leads to pain. And in particular, it's called painful crises of sickle cell. And this is a very common presenting symptom that sickle cell patients have. Other things that can happen is uh, you can develop splenomegaly, 
which is enlargement of the spleen. The spleen is um, essentially overwhelmed by this um, the sickle shaped uh, red blood cells and um, that can eventually cause the spleen to enlarge. Another thing that can happen because of the uh, poor blood flow is that you can detect it on a on a heart exam you'll have a cardiac murmur. But um, what's uh, really important is this one right here painful crisis and you might say well what, what part of the body is the person going to be pain is going to be uh, experiencing the pain in most commonly in sickle cell it's the long bones and uh, it can also present with pain in the joints so how do you diagnose this well there's two basic tests there's the peripheral smear peripheral smear is basically just a smear uh, sort of a, a an image of the red blood cells and on that smear you'll see the sickle shaped red blood cells but a more specific test is a hemoglobin electrophoresis and what this test does is it detects the abnormal hemoglobin that people have in uh, sickle cell disease so then how do you treat it well the pain is really treated with uh, analgesics uh, oftentimes very strong analgesics morphine and other opi opioids are used another mainstay of uh, managing a painful crisis is uh, hydration because uh, uh, sickle cell can lead to dehydration because uh, the sickling uh, so the hydration of a patient is very important. Now, another part of the treatment of sickle cell is antibiotics. Because when somebody has sickle cell anemia, basically their spleen um, will have reduced function. And because the sickle cell red blood cells are accumulating in the spleen, and the spleen will no longer be able to clear those like it used to with the normal red blood cells. So you get something called functional asplenia. And what that means is that asplenia by definition means the patient doesn't have a spleen. These patients do have a spleen but the spleen is uh, not functioning properly. So that's why it's called functional asplenia. Now, if a person's spleen is not functioning properly, it makes them susceptible to infection with certain encapsulated bacteria. And so that's why antibiotics are key um, uh, as part of the treatment and management of sickle cell. Uh, which bacteria? It's important to mention pneumococcal. pneumococcal uh, infections and also uh, salmonella salmonella infections and then the uh, other part of uh, sickle cell um, treatment and management uh, sometimes can include transfusions because sickle cell disease leads to anemia because the red blood cells are sickle shape and as they travel through the circulation they, uh, the trauma can lead to the, the destruction of these red blood cells so that leads to an anemia and oftentimes the hemoglobin count can be less than five so when that happens you have to give a transfusion and then finally there's one very important medication I wanted to mention it's hydroxyurea and this is important because this is given to sickle cell patients because it's shown that this can actually uh, decrease the pain in painful crises. It can actually reduce the sickling of the red blood cells. And um, it's um, 
therefore part of the mainstay of a treatment for somebody with sickle cell disease. So I just want to touch on some of the key points. Key points of sickle cell is you've got hemoglobin S, which is a, you can think of it as sort of a, like a mutant form of the normal hemoglobin, which is uh, hemoglobin A. And this causes the red blood cells that the hemoglobin sits inside to become sickle-shaped instead of the round shape. These sickle-shaped red blood cells can't travel through the blood vessels to the organs properly and that leads to ischemia and infarction of the tissue of those organs and that can lead to pain functional asplenia and uh, infection You diagnose it by doing a peripheral smear or hemoglobin electrophoresis. And then treatment involves pain medications such as opioids, um, antibiotics to treat the infection, sometimes transfusions, and aggressive hydration. So now I have a, um, a clinical vignette here. I'll go through this. Two-year-old girl with sickle cell disease is brought to the emergency department because of a one-day history of fevers. She is generally healthy and has not had any serious complications from the sickle cell disease. The mother tells you that she is compliant in giving her daughter the prophylactic penicillin antibiotics that has been prescribed. Temperature is 102. Physical exam shows clear rhinorrhea but is otherwise unremarkable. The most appropriate management of this child is two. Okay. Well, we um, talked about sort of the initial management of sickle cell. If you remember, it involves pain meds, involves antibiotics, it involves um, hydration, and if the hemoglobin is very low, it can involve transfusions. They don't tell us anything about her hemoglobin level. So let's go through these choices. Uh, observation. Okay, well that doesn't really do any of these, so that's out. Hydration and antipyretics. So something for the fever. Well, that seems pretty good. Number three says antibiotics and hydration. Well, that covers two of what we have. Increase the dose of prophylactic penicillin. Okay send a complete blood count and blood cultures and send her home all right well the best answer for this would be choice three and the reason is because this child has sickle cell disease and she presents with a fever and fever is oftentimes a sign of a infection so she definitely needs broad spectrum antibiotics and um, part of the mainstay of treating somebody with sickle cell disease, especially when they present to the emergency department, is adequate hydration.